Yeah. Whilst I was planting, I joined the regional development, regional office of the Janata Estates Development Board soon after the estates were nationalized. The estate that were nationalized were put into two, uh, two companies, the Janata Estates Development Board known as JDB and the SLSPC which is the Sri Lanka Plantation Corporation. Uh, my estate went to the Sri Lanka Plantation Corporation, uh, the Janata Estates Development Board and I worked for them for one year. Then I moved to the regional office in Norelia because my children were in school in Kandy and Norelia was closer. Whilst in Norelia, I was there for about two years. Uh, former Minister Garmin Zanayaka, who was in school with me, his younger brother is a classmate. He invited me to join him and work in the Mahavali Development Program. He said, I need some management expertise, I need some leadership qualities, and uh, I think you should do well. I went uh, and joined the Mahavali. I was uh, a resident project manager in the Kalawaya project for about five years. Then I came to Colombo as a general manager and subsequently visited all the projects that we had and I was in charge of that. Then I was appointed the managing director of the Mahali Development uh, Authority. Subsequently I left uh, to be a consultant on Mahali projects with USAID. And after USAID I also did a consultancy on elephants in Laos for the Food and Agriculture Organization, the FAO. Then I joined uh, the Asian Development Bank as the project director of wildlife. Subsequently, after three, four years, I became a consultant with the Asian Development Bank. Then I went back to planting in the sense that the, when the government, when the estates were being, uh, when the estate companies were being put up for auction, for lease, they found that the first two companies were taken by Indians. And the president then, Chandrika Kumaratunga, quickly decided that we must keep at least some of the estates, form the company called the Plantation Investment and Management Company and uh, bought two estate companies, Hapkas and Plantation and Brutusalaga. But subsequently it transpired that there were other Sri Lankan companies that took the estate companies on lease and this was not necessary. So she sold uh, those, that uh, National Inter Investment and Plantation Management Company to James Finlay's and I worked as general manager of the James Finlay's Plantation Holdings for a couple of years till I got the job with the Asian Development Bank as wildlife project director. I have written some, some articles on plantations after I left planting, the future of plantation, what we should do, the policies that we should enunciate and uh, put down to the plantation because sometimes we don't realize that there has been a transition from the time I started planting to the, to the present day. Uh, formerly, we used to, learn, even when I learned to work with Tanjan Vijayaratna, I was thrown into the field and I had to learn from the pluckers, from the manuring laborers and from, especially from the Kangaris. But now, and also we didn't do soil analysis, we didn't do leaf analysis, we did, you know, sort of, it was a thing that we did through experience. The management was based on previous experience. But now the management has changed, technology has changed, they are doing leaf analysis, they are doing various soil analysis, they are, they are, they are using modern technology for, to assist them in the management of the plantation, which is a good thing and which is a new thing, we are in that we didn't have yet. The estate is generally run on discipline and good management. The labor force contribute enormously to the running of these estates. And we, 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 they, I, they, they didn't have, from that time, didn't have adequate accommodation and they were brought from India, you know, just a little higher grade than slaves and they were put on these estates and they, their social life didn't develop, their quality of life didn't develop because it, they, at that time uh, social responsibility is not something that was in the planter's mind. You know, he, he used the laborers to get them, there was certainly better planters like Paul Lees who looked after them, gave them running water and gave them better quarters and things like that. But those are few and far between planters. So they held up the economy of the estate. They held up, they brought, they are the ones who contributed to the profitability of the estates. But over a period of time the estates moved on and uh, uh, labourers still did not improve. Till recently when there was a consciousness 
uh, with also outside influencers saying you must do this, you must do, look after the laborers, they are your li lifeblood. And then there is a, now there is an improvement of uh, quality of life of the laborers. But having said that, now we find that most of the laborers prefer to go out of the estate and work somewhere else. They, they prefer blue collar jobs. And uh, they would rather take a wage cut or a reduction in wages and work in a garment factory rather than pluck leaves, which they, they feel that there's some status in that. And that is not uh, something we should frown upon. I think that's a good, uh, good sign. But the estates are covered. Now they're talking of bringing more estate labor from India because we are terribly short of labor. And mechanization is not easy on uh, the estate because of the one is the undulating uh, type of land that we have. But now the wages and also now there are more strikes and demands for wages. So much so that we, the companies are given into the, uh, the point of the uh, garment gun, given into the increase in wages by the unions and now their profitability is also now getting uh, smaller and the profits are getting less and less. Of course there is the management fee that the companies take, so that doesn't really, really bother them the lots on the estates. As far as the future of the plantation is concerned, as you know, the plantation industry has survived for a long time. It is very resilient, prices go down, crops go down, but still it continues. But you can't go on in that ad hoc manner. You have to plan your uh, future. You have to look and see whether what are, what are the main thing is agriculture. The agricultural aspect where uh, you need to replant. When do you replant? What, what fields do you replant? What are the yields that determine that this is not uneconomical or not. Uh, you can't predict the prices because that varies from time to time. But there is a where scientifically we can look at how much when you really need for as replacement. Now we give replacement which is just maintaining. Maybe as incentives we can give more of fertilizer. And technologically we can also go for uh, tech, not technology, we can also go for diversification. If there is uneconomic tea we can put it into some other cash crop. If there's an economic rubber, we can put it to palm oil or we can put it into cashew. So there are, there are considerations that one has to uh, take to see at what optimum level you can run the estate as a profitable unit. Otherwise, you find yourself letting this field be because it's not yielding properly. But we are not making use of that land. We must make use of that land, not necessarily the main crop of the estate. So diversification, cash crops, whatever, has to be, it has to be intensive agriculture practiced on the estate as opposed to extensive agriculture. And I also visited the estate for the plantation restructuring unit when they were getting ready to lease it out to the RPCs after. So it so happened, I think, the background was that the estates had companies and those comp the management agencies had companies and those companies had uh, the uh, estates in different parts of uh, the country. Some had rubber and tea, some had tea only. And as a result, the estates belonging to a particular company, say the estates company, who were in different parts. And as a result, it was difficult to manage because, not difficult to manage, but it uh, wasn't the best way to manage. When Garmin Sanayaka was the Minister of Plantations, he organized what was called the cluster system. Since the ownership at that time was all with the government, they put estates in one district into a cluster and gave it to a company to manage. And that, in that way, the cluster system, after restructuring, became the basis of what the plantation restructuring unit took in terms of developing as a structurally the estates into uh, group uh, groups of estates in, geo in one geographical location, so that the management would be easy because they could have a common factory for a couple of estates there. They could have a common workshop. And there were a lot of advantages of having the estates all in and around you uh, in terms of management and efficiency. So with that, they gave released these companies out to the uh, companies that uh, bid for them and took them over. That is now history. But uh, one thing is that the plantation restructuring unit also had people, visiting agents, going around the estates, maintaining the same levels of uh, efficient management efficiency uh, that was uh, there during the plantation, 
during the company time when they stayed thrown by the company because they didn't want the estates to be run down when they ultimately offered it for lease to the regional plantation companies that came up and took them on lease. Now I have been appointed in, 19, in 2015 as chairman of the Coconut Research Institute and uh, I, I find it find it's a new job, the research institute where there are professional researchers, 19 of them with PhDs and uh, I have found that they are all very efficient, very good and I have given them the leadership and direction and management expertise that they lack but by themselves they have done fantastic work which has now still not hit the public domain. Most of it is being put on the public domain now. And we have got an international reputation for efficiency in research and uh, the international body that governs uh, the coconut research called the Asia Pacific Coconut Community have commissioned the CRI at my request to, uh, to conduct training programs for people from other countries to come and learn about coconuts.